I'm surprised uh, the Rambam, uh, I, I had missed this somehow, the Rambam actually says he believes it was all a dream. Right. A, a prophetic dream. And I, for somehow, never encountered that before, but that's a, I, I, if we have time, I want to talk about an article I read by a, a theoretical physicist who wanted to dabble in some neuroscience, science, <clears throat> excuse me, and he, I'll talk about how he shows that it's the dream and what happens in the dream is actually showing how in dreams the function is really to sort out the memories and the experiences of the day and the, and the mind decides which are important and which are not and, and does a sorting process. And the idea of keeping a memory and, and so on, you, you, uh, this, this idea you have in the dream, this experience of not forgetting it is, is attached to the, the detail of Yaakov going back over for a vessel that he might have forgotten. Right. So anyway, back. I want to hear that. That is absolutely amazing. And of course, <clears throat> there is the element of uh, of uh, some degree of prophecy or divine inspiration, mm -hmm. possibly in a dream as well. That's the whole problem with dreams: is that it's impossible to separate the chaff because they are they are caused by um, all sorts of things, and yet they also could contain an element of some sort of higher vision since the soul is basically released from the body during that time and is able to re reconnect with its source but yeah the, i've i've heard about that the rambam's <clears throat> uh, take on on this whole biblical incident and and that makes a lot of sense as well if it is a, a, also a prophetic vision and again yeah. the beautiful thing about torah study uh, that all of our all of our listeners know <clears throat> that are serious torah students is that all of these dimensions of interpretation are all true at the same time. Yeah. And the whole idea about the pardes, about the orchard, about pshat, remez, drosh, and sod, about the simple interpretation, and about the illusion, about the exposition, and about the secret inner meaning, they all exist simultaneously. Just like Hashem's voice at Sinai splintered into, into so many different uh, words at once, you know. Uh, it's it is the, the the above time and space the whole concept of of Torah being the manifestation of Hashem's ratzon His will in this world and therefore all of these levels they don't contradict each other you know they all ha they all somehow coexist. Yeah, I was yeah. reading an article, uh, uh, not surprisingly, one of my favorite websites is called Quantum Torah. So this particular uh, theoretical physicist, he's an observant Jew, he's a, he's a, a rabbi, he also holds a PhD in, in this, uh, this science, and I, I was looking at my notes here, his name is Professor Alexander uh, Polterock, and he's, he's brilliant, he's always talking about things in the Torah in terms of science, and this time he talks about actually neuroscience, and he, he reminds us in his article, which is called um, Jacob's Struggle with Man, a metaphor for neuroscience, and in it he talks about the research that shows us that uh, in, in the dream state, one of the things that, and, and how important dreams are, by the way, we see how important they are in the Torah all the time, but they're also, they're also important to your actual mental health, and they have found in studies that people who are deprived of sleep uh, they suffer more because because of sleep deprivation also means dream deprivation, and it's and the idea being that if you don't get a healthy uh, dose of dreams every night, then you actually one of the things is your mental health will fail, but you will also become uh, you'll become forgetful, and it, it will affect your your long term memory and even your short-term memory. And the idea being that he, he, he likens Yaakov crossing the Yabok River and going back over for precious items to, to hold on to, the things that he might forget, but that were still precious. That is the mind at night in the dream state, taking all the experiences of the day and, and if you will, sort of taking them like they were uh, pieces of mail, and being thrown in a cubby hole, and that uh, you're sorting them out and saying, this this is important, I need to keep this. 
and this experience is not so important. I could forget this. And you're making room in your mind. And what happens is if you don't do that enough, you your mental health will be affected. And he, and he points out that, that the, uh, the idea of, of making memories and holding on to them is actually one of the levels of interpretation of this experience all through the night and the fact that it happens all during the night. And, and uh, I wish I could remember what he said about the Yabuk actually represented something else. Well, I'll tell you, in, and, in, in, in Kabbalistic literature, the Yabuk represents a certain uh, level of transition, mm -hmm. a certain kind of passage. In fact, there's a very classic work um, that talks about um, death and mourning and the customs pertaining to preparation for death, and, it, and, and, and it's called the Yabuk Passage. Yeah, yeah. And then he also, very good, he also mentions this idea of the, uh, the, the, the Gid uh, Hanashe. And the, I didn't realize that it actually is the same root. And it is, it's, it's, it's in the name given to one of the sons of Yosef, uh, Manashe, because he, did, he forgot his troubles while, you know, while he was in Egypt. So he remembered that with, with that. And where do we, all through the Torah, uh, Israel is often enjoined by Hashem to to don't forget, don't forget, always remember. And so I think that aspect of the experience of Israel is is uh, something that is referenced heavily in this experience of the dream, and that even the angel would like Yaakov and his offspring to forget, forget your mission, forget your values. Forget the way of Torah. 